ladies and gents, as promised in part one of our review video of the AgriCision on track device, where we actually went out uh, mowing with this tractor behind us, and we uh, we basically got a first impression at that point, uh, saw what it was like doing a little bit of mowing. Now, what we're going to do, we are going to have a bit of a close look at it, really, just get to know it a little bit better, look at some of its features and functions, and some of its setup. Now, as I mentioned as well in uh, part one, the device pretty much still looks the same as when it was launched. You know, physically, it hasn't really changed. It's actually, it's the app side of things uh, that's seen the most development. As you can imagine, technology is constantly evolving. And likewise, the guys at AgriCision are constantly trying to improve the device, particularly the usability of it and things like that. So they do continually uh, develop the app side of things. And the most, probably the biggest and most recent development happened uh, last year in 2021 where they released the app for Android users, which is good. Obviously, it gives them a bigger market. And if you are an Android user, you can now use your phone or your tablet to control this, as well as the Apple people with the, you know, the iOS uh, operating system. Now, setup of this device could not be simpler, as you may have seen uh, in the uh, part one video where we went mowing with it, I literally did that blokey thing, uh, whipped it out the box, uh, stuck it on the bonnet, downloaded the app, uh, turned it all on and literally went for it. And to be honest, the setup is just that. It's not much more than that, to be honest. It is, you know, it's literally out the box uh, and it, you just pop it on the bonnet with the magnets. You got your integrated magnets uh, in there stick it on the bonnet obviously it sticks to a metal bonnet that's what it's been designed to do and i know you do get some of those bonnets that kind of have the grills where they come up and over or they have kind of grills on top so like new holland some new newer new holland tractors they've got a grill that comes up on over the top and like you look at some john deers they've got those uh, grills on the top at the front as well uh, and i'm told it will stick to the grills absolutely no problem as well you know metal grills it will stick to those now before you ask what do we do if it ain't a good old metal bonnet like these old girls are uh, and it's a plastic bonnet or a fiberglass bonnet or something like that well the guys at AgriCision have, or, have also thought of that as well and they supply these little stickers so you get these little stickers that are the same size as these magnets here so you get these four stickers they supply a bag full of stickers so you're not sure it's stickers so you get these little stickers and you then get this little template uh, and you uh, kind of position the template where you want the device to sit. Uh, so you position the template on the bonnet there and you pop your four little stickers on. Uh, your four little magnetic stickers so it's sticky on one side and it's uh, uh, a bit of metal on the other side that these magnets can then stick to what you do is you stick on your little like i say your little stickers leave them for a good half hour a good half hour to an hour something like that i think it does in the instructions when i did finally read them it did suggest uh, an hour to leave it basically you want to leave the stickers to uh, to cure to uh, you know to go off properly uh, to stick properly basically before you go putting this on because if you go and put this on too soon you could then end up ripping the stickers off but once they're on they are on and just going back to how good the magnets are as well on you know on metal bonnets like this this maxim here uh, as you'll have seen in the video when we were mowing, I mean, mowing isn't exactly the slowest job in the world. You can fairly tramp on and on the way to the field as well. We had to go up the lane a little bit, over some potholes, things like that. I'll tell you what, this never budged a millimetre. It was absolutely rock solid. Right, now on to positioning, which is the other important uh, aspect to set up of this device. And it wants to be pretty much towards the uh, front end of the bonnet, in the middle of the bonnet, and pretty much above the front axle. Now, there's uh, several reasons why that is the best uh, position for it. Uh, first of all, it's, uh, it's the first point of the tractor that actually moves around. I mean, if you think about it, if you could actually lift the tractor up on the nose and you moved it around, the front end is obviously moving, but the cab is pretty much re remains still. So that is the first point of the tractor that moves, and obviously it's the most responsive place for the device to sit on, on the nose. Also, it's the best place to see the light bar. Obviously you've got your light bar integrated into the device there, and when it's sat up there, 
it's in a really good spot. It's in your eye line. It's not like those old devices where you obviously had the receiver on the roof and you had the light bar in the cab and you have to constantly look down, then look up to see where you're going. And the trouble is, when you're doing that, you're shifting focus all the time. So you've got an object that's near and then you're looking far away. So you're constantly shifting focus. Whereas with this, when it's on the bonnet up there, it's in your eye line. It's in your eye line of where you're going. It's it's in a really good spot. And as I mentioned in the, you know that first part in the video where we went mowing with this, it's you know the lights are really bright. You can see them. It's uh, uh, yeah, it's just a good spot to put it in. Um, there's another good reason why that's the best place as well. It's because of uh, this and its uh, communication with the satellites and receiving the information from the satellites for its uh, signal correction and uh, where it needs to be. Uh, if it was up against here, up against the cab and you had it, had it right back here, you're basically cutting off its field of view to a lot of satellites. Whereas if it's down the front here, which is where it's meant to be, it can effectively see a lot more satellites up in the sky, up where, well, wherever they are anyway. So there you go, that's another good reason. And another couple of good reasons, uh, probably a little, you know, little reasons, uh, from a safety point of view as well. You know, I mean, obviously I'm six foot three, but you know, it's quite easy to literally reach from over here, you know, stood on the floor, pop it up there, and away you go. Granted, some tractors are going to be a little bit taller, you might have to get the old steps out, stand on something anyway, and pop it up there, but, it's nice and easy at the front. It's not as if you're climbing, you know, onto the top of the cab and getting it up there. It's nice and easy down the front. And again, that lends itself to security as well, because at the end of the day, what you can do is you can just take it off the bonnet, take it on with you and lock it up in your house as well. Uh, also, sorry, one more, one more as well. You know, as I mentioned, you know, like with those older uh, light bar devices where you have to put a receiver on the roof and then you've got the light bar in front of you there as well and you have to cobble some wires together throughout the cab and things like that. There ain't no wires with this. I mean, it's battery powered. It's all in one. Uh, the only cable you might need, especially if you've got a crappy old phone like mine, which dies in about three minutes, is you might just need your charging cable in the cab and that's it. But other than that, there's no wires because it's all in one and it's battery powered. Then at the phone end of things, I mean, mine's just an old iPhone. What is it? 6S, that could be a 7. Christ knows there's that many these days. Anyway, so at the phone end, basically all I have to do in terms of setup is download the app and they automatically start talking to each other. The device and that, when that's turned on, when the device is turned on, they automatically start talking to each other. There's no pairing of devices like you get with some things, and there's no passcodes to enter or anything like that. You literally, like I say, turn that on, turn that on, go. That is it, pretty much. And then once you're connected, put the phone in the phone holder, in the cab like I did when I was uh, using this with the mower, and that's it. Plug, play, away you go. And then finally, for this part, back to the device itself now, as you may, may see, I don't know if you can just quite see them there, there are some hooks on the back there, some little integrated hooks. Now they are for the USB cable uh, and you can pretty much wrap them around there and store them there. But I mean, looking at it, and I know this from personal experience as well, it's unlikely you're probably gonna use those hooks. Uh, it's easy enough to just keep the cable somewhere else. That's probably the most likely thing that's gonna happen. Uh, the other thing, I suppose, if they could make one little improvement actually, it's just to the access of the USB port there, which is used for charging. Uh, it is, well, it's all right, actually. It's not the end of the world. It's just a little bit fiddly, uh, especially for if you've got chunkier fingers or you're a bit of a cack handed frigger like myself. But like I say, it ain't the end of the world. It's not too bad to get to. There you go, you sit there. And then on to charging. It's basically, it's uh, from flat, it uh, takes five hours to charge it up but to be honest it comes fully charged when it turned up uh, and you're probably not going to use that much power in a day especially if you're only using it here and or there um, and from a full charge you'll get a good well you'll get more than 24 hours use out of it uh, so I'm told um, so you'll get a few shifts out of it before you charge it up but like you know as I mentioned as well you know at the end of the day literally just take it off the bonnet take it with you plug it in uh, charge it up, give it a top up and she'll be good to go for the next time for whatever you need it. So there you go boys and girls, that's a few features and functions. We've still got 
quite a bit more to discuss with this yet, uh, you know, particularly with a bit more technical details, things like that, how it connects, you know, the satellite coverage and things like that. But what we'll do is, we'll uh, we'll get trying it out with a few more jobs first. Like I say, I really want to try this out, fertilizer spreading. Can't wait to try it out for fertilizer spreading because I think it will come into its own. So while we're, when when we do start doing those jobs, that's when we'll discuss a few more bits on it, really. So until then. Uh, as ever, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, we'll crack on and we'll see what else we can find with this, uh, this little device.